This is Chicho. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to reading set number four. And what we're going to do in this uh, video, we're going to read uh, Book of Death, Fall of Armager number one. And this book came out in uh, 2015. And it was a one shot that was sort of associated with a story or a crossover. Well, not a crossover, but sort of a story that Valiant Comics uh, put together their event for 2015. And it was the main event was called Book of Death. And they released, well, eight sort of, but four one shots that were related to the fall of, uh, of to the Book of Death uh, event that they were doing. Okay, and Fall of Harbinger is one of those books, and we're gonna have a read through this. And I'm not gonna give, um, try not to give too many spoilers on this because we are gonna read this. Um, I'm just gonna let you know that this is sort of a um, all four fall of books that Valiant put out. They're sort of focus on a certain type, certain character, and they look at that character uh, throughout the timeline of the Valiant universe, uh, doing some flashbacks and looking into the future. And that's what this story is about, the fall of Harbinger, right? So the four books were Book of Death, Fall of Harbinger, and this was written by Joshua Dysart, and the art was by Cano, and Cano is a Spanish artist. His um, name is Jose Angel Cano Lopez, but he signs his name. He goes by Cano when he's doing the artwork, and he's done work with DC and Marvel and some work with Valiant Comics. And Joshua Dysart is one of the best storytellers around, right? He's done work for a lot of different publishers from DC to Dark Horse to Image to IDW. And he's done some independent stuff and he's done a ton of work for Valiant Comics. He's actually the writer for the first Harbinger series for the Valiant relaunch that came out in 2012. And I highly recommend that series. It ran for 25 issues um, and it had an issue number zero. Uh, with the bleeding monk i believe and that series was absolutely fantastic and it crosses over with the harbinger wars and into bloodshot for uh, about four or five issues right so joshua dysart wrote this and cano did the artwork okay and the fall of harbinger is one of the books one of four that was related to the book of death miniseries there was fall of harbinger okay and this is another cover it's fall of harbinger number one again okay and they release multiple covers uh, valiant for this story arc especially but in general they release a few different covers okay um and then there was fall of bloodshot and fall of bloodshot is absolutely magnificent as well that's one cover and that's another cover for fall of bloodshot and uh fall of bloodshot it was it was a tearjerker really it brought tears to my eyes if you're if you're familiar with the character and you've read this story uh you'll know why and uh, it's absolutely magnificent while fall of harbinger was more on the epic level it was very personal as well but it was very epic fall of bloodshot was just extremely personal uh very very emotional fall of bloodshot uh and then there's fall of ninjack which is again a fantastic read very good read okay and the artwork for this was absolutely brilliant the story with for this is jeff lemire and the story for fall of ninjack is matt uh Kindit, okay and the artwork for this was uh, beautiful as was the artwork for the other two as well and then the fourth fall of book that valiant released was fall of exo man of war or yeah fall of exo man of war for the book of death story arc right and exo man of war was very good as well it was it was a heartfelt story okay as far as how i would rate these comics goes i liked uh, i liked all four of them um fall of exo man of war was uh, it was a good read it, it wasn't epic like the other ones fall of ninjak was absolutely magnificent uh, it was epic as well, very epic as well. Uh, Fall of Bloodshot was magnificent, uh, and Fall of Harbinger is absolutely brilliant. For me, I uh, I would rate Fall of Harbinger and Fall of Bloodshot as my favorite out of the four. Uh, Fall of Ninja close second, and Fall of Exo uh, being I don't want, I don't want to say my least favorite. It was fantastic read, but it wasn't 
it didn't have as great an impact on me. And what I want to do is sort of, uh, instead of giving you any spoilers for this, I want to put this into context, um, into content. So, um, context. So, uh, you know how this is related to the rest of the event that Valiant did. So, these are the fall of, you know, the character for the Book of Death one shot. Okay. Now, the crossover that Valiant did was this here the crossover that valiant did was the book of death that was the main story arc apologies apologies about the glare right now hopefully we'll get most, rid of most of it when we take it when we do the reading when we get it off the out of the bag but with new comics because they're glossy they still have a certain amount of grit glare to them as well okay but this is the main story arc that valiant did the main event that valiant did which was the book of death all right and this is book of death number one and here's number two. Uh, here's number three. Just one of the covers for number three. They released multiple covers for this. We'll take a look at a couple of them. Uh, and the story for uh, Book of Death is told by Robert, Robert Vendetti. And the artwork was done by Robert Gill, Doug Bra Braithworth, David Barron, and Brian Reber and this is book of death number four and this was really uh this was fantastic i love um i love a lot of the crossovers a lot of the events that valiant is doing um uh, all in all they've all been fantastic um harbinger wars was amazing valiant was amazing or the valiant was amazing uh 4001 was amazing but for me book of death is my favorite right now uh, because it tied into a lot of things and it and it was very epic it covered a lot of characters and it did a lot of flashbacks as well as looking to the future right so these were four of the covers for the book of death event that they did the four issues and this is book of death number four as well right and i highly recommend this read because it focuses on um eternal warrior and the geomancer and it gives us a lot of history and um it looks into the interaction the relationship between the different characters right and this is another cover of this book of death number four and on this one they have a little you know advertisement i guess and it says flip this book for wrath of the eternal warrior preview because what happens is the Book of Death miniseries, the four issues directly kick into Wrath of the Eternal Warrior. Okay, and this is uh, Wrath of the Eternal Warrior issue number one. And I got, I got multiple covers. This, this is three of the covers. Okay. And it ran for, um, the series ran for, I think, 12 or 13 issues. I should have looked this up, but it's an amazing series. If you like the Eternal Warrior, this is sort of the quintessential uh the defining series for the eternal warrior and the book of death the four issues are the prelude to this they're really the same you know they should be considered to be part of wrath of the eternal warrior uh series so wrath of the eternal warrior didn't just run for 12 issues or, th or 13 issues it ran for 16 issues you gotta add these four to the because this directly kicks into the wrath of the eternal warrior and it's a fantastic read and it sort of looks into um you know what happens with the eternal warrior after he dies right and um you know the struggle that he goes through and what he has to uh, what he has to do uh, before his rebirth right so we have fall of uh, book of death fall of series there were four issues that are one shots we have the book of death the event the four issues that they're doing that connect kicks off into the wrath of the eternal warrior okay and all of these are standalones these four here you can read by themselves you don't have to read this to be able to read this you don't have to read wrath of the eternal warrior um to be able to understand these 
And you don't have to read this to be able to understand Book of Death. The only thing I would say that you should do in a specific order is read the Book of Death four issue mini series and then kick into Wrath of the Eternal Warrior. And anytime you want, you can read a one shot of these guys because they're not really connected. They just put these events out at the same time. And there's four other books that Valiant put out that are related to this as well. And those four books um, we've already done a reading for. And they're basically the story arc of Legends of the Geomancer. And these were sort of incentive story that Valiant put out as um, to retailers. They basically, if they ordered uh, 25 issues of Book of Death number one, they got Legends of the Geomancer number one. If they ordered 15, I believe, of Book of Death number two, three, and four, they got Legends of the Geomancer two, three, and four. Okay. And what Valiant uh, stated when they did this, they said that they would not reprint the story of the Legends of the Geomancer uh, ever again. And this series is a must read. Okay. And that's the once Valiant said that they weren't going to release this. Uh, in reprints at all, I ended up getting my hands on them, and we did the reading for all four of these books. Now I've buried um, number two, number three, and number four. I couldn't find them in my books, but I did end up getting. Um, I ended up buying a lot of Legends of Geomancer number one at a pretty good deal when um, Bury Exit happened, a Brexit happened, uh, when the UK pound dropped a little bit. It was a seller that was selling five of these things uh, from the UK so I ended up getting my hands on them so this is Legends of the Geomancer number one I don't have the covers for Legends of the Geomancer 2, 3, and 4 to show you guys right now but if you want to have a read through this um, you can read it through the videos or take a look at the videos and the stuff is available online as well people have uploaded it and uh, the CEO of Valiant sort of stated that you really didn't have to spend the extra money to get these incentives um, if you're low on funds, people would be sharing this information. So it was very happy to have this information shared, uh, the story arc shared. And this is absolutely fantastic. I won't give too many spoilers if you plan on watching those videos, but basically it gives you the origin of the Anipada brothers, basically the Eternal Warrior Armstrong and Ivar, and it gives us the origin of the Geomancer. And this as far as i'm concerned is a must read for the entire valiant universe okay so we ended up having the main event which was the book of death right which was four issues that kicked into wrath of the eternal warrior we had the one shots associated with the book of death which told the story of four of their main characters doing some recaps and looking to the future to see you know what's going to transpire into the future we had the legends of the geomancer right book of that legends of the geomancer which was sort of the origin of the anipata brothers and the origin of the geomancer and really um, eternal warrior had a huge part to play in the book of death which kicks into the wrath of the eternal warrior and there's a background story to Legend, Legends of the Geomancer that is a must read if you really want to appreciate what's going on with the Geomancer and the Eternal Warrior, okay? And just to show how epic the story arc was for the Valiant universe, I think as a tribute, what Valiant ended up doing was printing variant covers for the Book of Death, for the four issue mini arc that were a tribute for rye number zero that came out in the early 2000s and rye number zero is probably the most epic standalone comic that valiant put out um, in the 1990s the first valiant uh, launch i guess right because basically what this did was take the character rye and bloodshot right and look at their origin and span all the way into the future and show us how bloodshot and rye were connected right and talked about all the characters main characters in the valiant universe which is sort of the same way that the fall of these four issues 
sort of handle their stories, right? They're sort of told in the same way as Rye Number Zero. And we did a reading for this book as well, for Rye Number Zero, because it was a pretty important book. Um, it's first full appearance of Bloodshot and shows us, you know, the origin of Rye and the death of a lot of the different characters. It's, it's, it's epic, like for the uh, 1990s Valiant, it is the, the most epic book they put out. And these are just two of the variant covers that Valiant put out. And there's two more. This is for the Book of Death, the variant for Book of Death number two. And this is the variant for Book of Death number four. And unfortunately, I don't have the, the variants of these for Book of Death number one and number three, but I will be grabbing them at some point. Um, in the future because I love I would love to frame these all in a row right as I mentioned before I think when we did when we looked at some of the stuff uh, previously as you know if you're watching my videos uh, I do love valiant reads I do love valiant reads okay so what we're gonna do is you know we've read some valiant so far we've read Magnus number five as well which was a first appearance of Rai right um, and that was a, as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the most important books Valiant has put out. Uh, Magnus number five on the flip book was the first appearance of Rye, right? We've done the reading for Rye number zero, which is the 1990s epic uh, standalone. Okay. We've done the reading for Legends of the Geomancer, all four issues, because it's extremely important. It gives the origin of the Geomancer and the Anipata brothers okay how they came to be and what we're going to do right now is have a read through fall of harbinger okay it's book of death fall of harbinger the standalone that came out in 2015 and to me this was magnificent as as uh, uh, sort of same opinion that a lot of other people that I've talked to online the one person that I've talked to in person the comic book owner I uh, consider to be this to be one of the best reads uh, you know he's ever had and one of the best reads I've ever had as well okay hopefully I'm not building it up too much um, it may have a greater impact fall of harbinger may have a greater impact for those who know uh, the Harbinger series who are familiar with some of the characters but it should be a good read uh, no matter what uh, if if you're new to this story I think it should be a good read as well for you okay I hope so anyway so I'm gonna put on my glasses and uh, we're gonna crack this open and that was sort of the intro uh, to this read sort of pretty epic but book of death was a pretty epic uh, event that valiant did okay so again the grade on this is uh, near mint right i don't know if this was my previous reading copy uh, but i do take care uh, reading my books as well and uh, again the story for this is uh, by joshua dysart and the artwork is by cano Book of Death, Fall of Harbinger, and I might give you a little bit of background on some some of the stuff that may be happening here. And apologies about the glare. Uh, reading older books, one good thing with them is they weren't glossy, so we're not getting any glare. With the new books, and we haven't done too many new books. I think there's, uh, you know, we've done five readings uh, for books from the 2000s four of them were book of the uh, the legends of the geomaster one of them was joe sacco's uh, the fixer and i think this is going to be the fifth reading that we're going to do for a 2000 series right um a comic book from the 2000s and one thing that valiant does which is which is really good is they usually give us a summary of what has transpired uh so far before the story begins so everyone sort of gets a nice little recap if you read those stories or has a nice intro to some of the characters some of the some of the background that you need to know for the stories okay so let's read uh, the fine fine print here as well and i'm going to try to tilt the pages so we get as little glare as possible okay so the fine print for this 
um, Book of Death, Fall of Harbinger number one, September 2015, Valiant Entertainment, LLC, Office of Publication 424 West 30, uh, 33rd Street, New York, New York, copyright 2015, Entertain, Valiant Entertainment, all rest reserved, all characters, their distinctive likeliness and related in indicia. Um, Featured in this publication are trademark of Valiant Entertainment. The stories, characters, and incidents featured in this publication are entirely fictional, printed in the U.S. For more information, please visit ValiantUniverse.com. And that's the first printing of this. Okay. And let's take a look at this. Let's read the backup. Uh, what's transpired so far? And this story takes place after the first uh, Harbinger series, the 25 issues, right? And the number zero with the bleeding monk. Peter Stanchek is a psyot, human beings with mental abilities that grant tremendous power. Until Peter emerged to oppose him, the world's most powerful psyot was Toyo Harada. A billionaire industrialist, philanthropist, and mentor to generations of gifted individuals, seeking out promising young psyots through his secret Harbinger Foundation, Peter and Harada are the planet's only two Omegas, the most powerful psyots of all. Harada believes in imposing world peace at the end of a sword. Peter believes humanity should be free to pursue its own destiny. The world's oldest known psyop is a powerful precog called the Bleeding Monk. The monk led Harada to find and train Peter, but he warned Harada that Peter was doomed to be the great destroyer, liable to wreak untold devastation. Peter formed a team of renegades to fight Harada, Faith who has the power of flight and a sunny disposition, Charlene a firebrand with pyrokinetic abilities, Torque, a disabled young man whose mind makes him an unstoppable powerhouse, and Chris, an ordinary human who grew up with Peter and became the team's strategist. These renegades exposed Harada, Toyo Harada and brought down his corporate empire. At a price, Charlene was killed in the battle and Peter went into hiding. Against the bleeding monk's counsel, and with Peter nowhere to stop him, Harada waged war to realize his vision. This is the story of the fall of Peter Stanchek, his friends, and his enemies. This is the story of the fall of Harbinger. Okay. And the two main characters from here that the story focuses on, or the main character the story focuses on, is Peter Stanchek. Okay. And his nemesis arch enemies toyo harada the person that's in the background here and we'll see him in the story okay and we're going to see all these characters mentioned so let's begin this read brilliant coloring nice artwork 14 months earlier keeper base earth's moon year 2183 ce Curtis, it looks like the pressure is bottling him out on the catcher vat. Could it be empty? No report from the nano swimmers, Anna. Maybe it's clogged. The robot replies. It's just draining. Taking a sound. Curtis Manfield, come quick, something's wrong. Let us through, please, same robot. And here's the lady, here's this lady running through. What's happened to him? The bleeding man has bled to death. And the 
bleeding monk, uh, let me give you a little background on the bleeding monk. The bleeding monk is a person that was mentioned here, and he was the original Sayat, and he was a precog. He could see into the future and, um, and look at all possibilities. And one thing that would happen to him is he would he was constantly bleeding. Okay, and if you want to read more about the bleeding monk, I believe it's Harbinger number zero, and it's the bleeding monk story arc. Okay, and this is the blood that. The scientist is collecting right of the bleeding monk so the bleeding monk is dead that has been around for thousands of years right I'm racing away from earth trying to get as much distance as I can Currently about 600,000 miles from Petersburg, Pennsylvania, where I was born. My name is Peter Stanchek. I am the Omega. And I'm flying to my death. There are people I will miss, but I'm not sad. It's past my time, has been for a while now. I never expected to live so long. I never expected to be so happy in the end. Or to have my, my first friends by my side. Let's do this. That's Torque talking right there. That's Chris and that's Faith. The three of the people that we mentioned uh, in the back. Uh, writer Joshua Dysart, artist Cano, letterer David Lamphere, cover artist Raul Allen. And Raul has done a lot of work for Valiant as well. So we have Peter Stanchek flying through space. The leading monk is dead, and Peter's in space. Foundation Zone, Samoa Coast Global Administration Hub. And this is Toya Harada. The Empires, let's get a close up of this. The Empires of the Future are the Empires of the Mind, Toya Harada. Hello, Monk Keeper Curtis Manfield, Mayfield. Omega Peter Stanchek, President of the Harbinger Foundation. We'll see you now. Curtis, always good to see someone from the sunlight of snow perception node, Mr. President. So this is Peter, right here. We're back at the time of the Bleeding Monk dying. We've troubling news, and so, so, since we refuse to interact with you, your tech, I'm afraid the only way is face to face. I already know the monk who does not die is dead. Well, I guess that's why you're the president. The robot says. He came to me last night in a vision. He 
told me, it's over, Peter. It's the end of everything. He said that Harada is finally returning to Earth. That he's more powerful, more blind, and more destructive than he has ever been. Nothing will survive this, his arrival. This is the outcome of struggle to counter since the moment I was given sight. But all my manipulations have been in vain. Never once was our course in doubt. My failure is a testament to Harada's will, I imagine. I should have killed him when he was a boy. I won't survive this psychic impact that's about to hit this planet. So I have ended. Goodbye, Peter. Wait, there's nothing we can do? That can't be right. I cannot see beyond the arrival of the unrestrained Harada mind. That means only one thing to me. Finality. Ah, I see. The sunlight and snow perception node has just convened a series of debates with itself and passed a vote. That's the robot, the sentient robots. It's very hard for us to inform you that we don't have the resources to evacuate all, all sapient life from Earth. We'll, st we'll stay planet side as long as we can, assist in, a, in any way possible, but I'm afraid that when the time comes, we're out. We wish all organic matter across this plant across the planet the best. We are so very fond of you. Twelve years before I had been I had been the last human being to ever see Toyo Harada. So we're doing a flashback. Twelve years before. Look. At my school for dissident psyots, what is it? I better get Master Stenchuk. Hello, Peter. Sama, your presence here violates all opposition party treaties. We're well within our rights to defend ourselves. That's Peter talking. I've only come to talk. Dad, something's wrong. Look at him. That's Peter's daughter. It's okay, Faith. Yes. If I'm not back in an hour, contact the opposition council be careful darling that's peter's wife and peter's daughter what is this some kind of ship a resonation chamber with self-triggering psyot inhibitors similar to my sleep bolts I 
I spent most of my time in here now, but it won't hold me for much longer. What does that mean? Are you dying? Peter says, No. I don't know. Maybe. Marauder replies. It's becoming harder and harder to contain my mind and my physical form. I'm worried of what will happen around me when I fully lose control. If I undo everything I fought for because of one last disastrous mind swell, well, I simply can't allow it. I refuse to be an extinction extension of the bomb that created me. I'm leaving, leaving Earth, Peter. I'm going off somewhere to, I guess, to die. Yes. And just to let you know, a mind squall, what he's referring to there, mind squall is when a psyop loses control of their abilities uh, mentally and they just destroy everything around them, right? So Toya Harada is worried that he's going to lose control and he's going to cause an event that's going to destroy everything, even planet Earth, right? So let's read the read this again lead into it i'm leaving earth peter i'm going off somewhere to i guess to die yes but the world i've built it will not stand without leadership you must take over the harbinger foundation no one else can if you leave me in charge the first thing i'll do this whole planet-wide elections you must know that peter says fine peter just make sure you're powerful enough to win them all goodbye harada and harada just takes off in his little spaceship i guess harada crossed the nimbus nimbus ring that he himself had built and that was and that was it so Harada takes off and here's the Nimbus ring that's around the planet Earth and that was it until now ten months ago the psych psionically activated minds of earth began to hear an, an incessant buzzing as the source of the psychic signal grew cl closer the buzzing became louder there could be no doubt harada was coming home seven months ago a power powerful monochrome level Sion in unified Korea mind squall killing thousands. So this is what a mind squall looks like. A lot of destruction. Sion lose control. Six months ago, the inactivated began to hear the approaching signal. They were even less able to deal with it. Mental illness, virtually extinct, began to spike species-wide. So people started going crazy, killing themselves, suicide. Five months ago, infant mortality rates started to climb as newborns went insane in their cribs. The signal grew. Political harmony became fragile. Chamber of, Chamber of Global Congress, established by President Stanchek. So he held elections, it was a Congress, right? We called, it, we called to the representatives from the divinity ultimatum. Only your divinity can stop Harada. And divinity is a God level 
being in the valiant universe. Okay. And I guess this is his counsel. Where, so where is the Savior now? We must assume that divinity lacks interest in such material matters. The divinity council says. Material matters. This is all human life we're talking about. You psychophant. So the psyops are going at it. They're fighting in Congress. Four months ago, a disagreement between two reps in our highest democratic body devolved into full psionic conflict. Enough, Peter steps in. I had officially lost control of the perfection Harada had forced upon us. Aye. Oh, he enters their minds like this. Stops them right off. I'm taking the floor. The Harbor Foundation is actively researching for the physical location of the approaching Harada mind. The closer the signal gets, the easier it is for our hyper -psy psychics to pinpoint, though at great risk to themselves, he says. As soon as we have a location, I will go out and confront Harada personally, Peter says. His wife is concerned there. Ambassador, Ambassador Aretha Franklin of the Sunlight of Snow Perception Node, the Harbinger Foundation humbly petitions you, lift your ban on tech trade to provide us with a faster ship than any we currently have. That's what Peter's asking the, the sentient uh, life forms, right? The robots. The sunlight on snow perception node. The SOS perception node has just convened, debate and voted. We will provide, provide a starship at our highest non-sentient tech level. It would, of course, be unethical to send a thinking machine to a gunfight, particularly one, according to our projections, is a suicide run. So they're not going to send the, the AI, they're going to send just tech. Once a long time ago, I was a boy, always in over my head. Peter remembers. Then I became a man, a leader. I'm scared, Peter. It's all so in incomprehensible. You're leaving us forever. For what? A husband. A father. And finally, maybe at last, a hero. Peter, enough with the brooding man. It's the end of the world. He's back at the starship. Let's kick it. <laughs> That's one of Peter's friends from, uh, we meet him in the first Harbinger series from 2012. All of these characters get introduced there, okay. The Renegades. Together we help bring about what Faith called the superhero singularity. Peter remembers. Of course, they're just, of course, they're just projections from my mind, constructed from memory and imagination, and set free to act and be on their own. Peter says. Peter 
but they feel real and it's the best I can do now. This is what you think we'd be like if we were old and beautiful and fulfilled, huh? That's surely talking. Look at Peter's face, so happy. You all deserve a Charlene, the kind of happiness of found. After all these years, after everything we went through together, I'm curious to hear what you would say to us now, Peter. Ha ha, yes, I love that, Chris. Let's do that, Faith says. Org, dork. Chris, how are you still so boring? Can't we just party like we used to? Who knows how much longer we've got? Torque's right. Let's blow this mother out. Peter agrees. Peter, of all this, going off to fight Harada is just the same as it ever was, over and over again. You never really got off that particular wheel, did you? And Harada's what, 60 years older than you? Who's to say that even if you do survive, his fate won't be yours in six decades? The thought has crossed my mind, Peter says. Screw this. Nobody wants to see their heroes grow old. Let's be young again. What would my last words to each of them be if they were really, if we were all truly here together at the end of history? They're all young again. To Chris, I'd say that I finally know what love is and that of all my mistakes, and I've made a few, I regret what I did to her the most. To Charlene, I would say that a great sadness of my life is never having been able to see, see her achieve all of her potential. To Torque, I'd apologize for always thinking I was better than him, when really we were the same, scared, hungry for love and respect than friendship. And to Faith, after she convinced me to go into rehab, we spoke at least once a week until the day she, well, until the end. I would tell her she was the one person who always believed in me. Everything I am now, it's all an effort to deserve her admiration. Nice. Nice page. And for Joe. This is nice, man. This is what I always wanted for us, you know, to be ballers. Wish I, wish, wish I could have been part of this crew. I failed you, Joe. You saved me when I was nothing. Then the first time I saw a chance to be, to be something, I abandoned you. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, 
What are you going to do? It was like 200 years ago, you know. This is Peter. Here's what I have learned. No matter how long you live, no matter who you become or what you've done to change, it's who, who you were in the beginning, where you came from. You'll always carry that with you. The only foundation you have to build, build your future self on is your past. Some of that past is good, strong, level, rock. And some of the past is quicksand. Ah. As I get closer to the approaching unrestrained or out of mind, the wave of psychic static becomes everything. This was the price, Chris. We all knew we'd eventually have to pay for the deal we made with Harada to build us a better world. Peter, we never made that deal. He forced it on us. The psychic heat of the Harada mind presses it on me. I can no longer maintain their projections, and suddenly I experience every inch of emotion I felt when they each first died. Joseph Irons, age 18, an escaped mental patient and narcotic narcotics addict, murdered by order of Toyo Harada. His killing kicks off a renegade psyot insurgency against Harada global conglomerates when the largest corporation in the world, then the largest corporation in the world. That's Peter there, that's Joey. Charlene Dupre, Flamingo, age 19 die saving faith during the battle to expose Toyo Hirata as the greatest robber baron in human history. Hala Torkala, Sunday 8 p.m. That's the reality show that Tork had. Tork, over here, man. Hey, Tork, can you no longer protect your alter ego shell? Get back. Clear clear this hallway or we'll have to tase we'll tase all of you. That's the security. Oh, that's the hospital room, right? There's the contraptions shadow of it. John Tolkelson, Torque, age thirty-four. First Syod reality TV star dies of complications from spinal bifida. Don't let TMZ see, see me cry, Torek says. Those people are monsters. That's faith right there. Faith 
Faith Herbert, Zypher, age 97, dies peacefully of heart failure while sleeping next to her loving husband, Obadiah Archer. After a long, successful career as the world's most popular superhero. That's our straw. My cough is floating. That's cool. Her funeral is the most attended in recorded history. Christine Hathaway, age 64, ex-political prisoner, founder of the Harada Opposition Party, assassinated on the eve of her re-election to the United States Senate. Gun. The stations, stations of Harada protect the future. Harada denies all association with the stations having declared them a terrorist organization. He is doing this to me, Toya. All the sadness compressed into a single moment. I feel like I'm going to vomit. The ship disintegrates as it hits the event horizon of the unrestrained Harada mind. I fall towards the source of the destructive psychic wave. creatures surrounding him. He's trapped. I see him at the center of a rolling plasma wave. My teacher, my mentor, my oldest and last surviving enemy, Toyo Harada, the only other Omega level Psyot known to man. And he's not alone. God, Peter, I've been waiting a decade for you to save me. I'm so sorry for what's about to happen. That's a scalp opened up in his brain. his broken body and dumps into mine everything he has ever thought felt and done pours into me i am a thimble he is an ocean there's a rat right there his mind is going to peter all the red are all the creatures there
is Rada profile, Peter profile. Rada pours into Peter. I relive his fate. I spend months alone in the void, crossing the great nothing of space towards our sun. I land on the North Pole of Mercury, where the temperature is stable at 100, negative 136 degrees. I can feel myself starting to break out of the cocoon of my own matter. Something beautiful is about to happen to me. I start vibrating at a strange frequency, rattling free from my physical cage. And that's when I'm ambushed. I'm so high on the ecstasy of transformation that I'm unaware of the danger until it's too late. My transcendence is interrupted. There's some kind of transdimensional psychic eaters. They have no culture, no sen sentience, just hunger incarnate. drawn like moss to a flame by the enormous amount of energy I'm kicking off. I'm enslaved. They feed on me constantly. There's Toyo right there. Captured. All these creatures around them. How many have they leapt on at the moment of enlightenment? Was this Buddha's fate, Jesus's, countless transcending aliens? It's impossible to know how long I'm on Mercury. Inside the constant psychic feeding, there is no sense of time. Then, almost succumb and non-existent, they use the last of my life force to ride me to Earth. By gifting the human race with psionic powers, I have only prepared a feast for monsters. Harada never lost control at all. It was his suffering we felt approaching us all this time, his honor, horror, his struggle. And now only we, the unified Stanchek Harada mind, the singular Omega, can hope to stop these creatures. They're merging. Or they have merged. We are one. We know what has to be done. Refrain from using psionics if possible. It only feeds them, but keep our shield up. We won't hold them off forever, but it's a start, and we need the oxygen that's trapped inside. Then cut off their food supply, destroy what's left of the Harada body, and therefore the Harada brain. Flies towards Harada and grabs him.
physically kill Harada with our bare hands. Choking him here a little bit. See your finger, face. Right here. Look at that. He's choking him. This massive plasma wave is, is a product of Harada's runaway kinesis on the material makeup of space. We don't even realize we're still caught in this momentum, falling backwards. Until we surge past the moon. So here they come. The waves coming. Here's the moon. They're going past the moon. Destroying a moon base. I'm assuming, right? And heading towards Earth. It took Peter days to reach Harada out in the depths of space. It takes us a matter of hours to return to Earth. If we can keep the eaters off, our, off Peter's body, out of our unified mind if they have no psionic control or protection to save them. If they are weakened enough by the lack of food source, then they won't survive the 40,000 mile per hour impact with the Earth's surface. Look at that. The waves hitting the Earth. But the plasma wave cannot be stopped. Millions die as it washes past the earth to continue on in its way through space. Destroying everything. When it's done, there are no more eaters left to enslave whoever has survived. There's the impact crater with Peter. Peter and Harada in the middle of it. Humanity will live on, did my children, my wife, but I, Peter, will not. The body's taken too much damage. The brain was boiled trying to keep my shield intact during impact. I'm slipping away. Peter, I'm sorry, Master. I can't keep us alive. We're going to die now. No, Peter, we won't die. The transcendence I began on Mercury, I can finish it now. There's no phys physicality where I'm going, where we're going. Come with me as one. I am grasping, trying to hold on to the Harada mind trying to ascend come with me peter let go of form i struggle with everything i have left in me harada's in the blue eyes that's peter
As the Harada mind becomes pure, conscious light, we are wretched apart. I am left behind. Forgive me, Peter. Forgive me. Only a single element of humanity gets to move on. The rest of us are simply shaft. At the moment of my death, I am stroked by his heat, and in his light, I glimpse vast universal truths. This is an ending, yes, but with great clarity. It is revealed to me that no ending is true. As long as time and space layer and fold and cross back again, what is experienced now is only real now. Somewhere else, another version of myself transcends the material plane together with Toyo. Or dies earlier, or fails harder, or does better. This is an ending. This is true. No ending is true. Ten years later, Greece. My name is Yesh. Peter's wife. My late husband, Peter Stanich, was the last of only two Harbinger Foundation presidents. Together, he and Toyo Harada are known as the great destroyers after the confrontation left humanity and our world utterly devastated. We will never know the truth of that conflict. All we know for certain is that Harada went mad and lost control, that he was coming for Earth, that Peter went out to stop him, that Peter failed. Welcome, Representative Yish. It's an honor. Thank you for coming on such short notice. We're very anxious to see the newborn. SOS note Isaac Hayes. As we rebuild, we often remember the time when the gods battled across the vast expanse of space. But that's all in the past. The child is kept in a protective environment, but all of her vital vitals are perfectly fine. The only difference is the most obvious one, of course. The monk, the bleeding monk. The constant, unending flow of blood. We live in the future now. Welcome back, monk, she says. An end. Nice story, beautiful story. Very, very epic. Here's Fall of Exo Man of War.
here's the book of death event checklist right it was book of death number one and the fall of bloodshot was released with that in the same month july book of death number two fall of ninjak book of death number three fall of harbinger and it was book of death number four fall of exo man of war right? nice story fantastic events fantastic reads and here's the Eternal Warrior number, Wrath of the Eternal Warrior number one that kicked off right after Book of Death, the four issue that was done. That was sort of a prequel to the Wrath of the Eternal Warrior. Fantastic series, fantastic series. Raul Allen, Robert Venditti, written by, right? Art by Raul Allen. Fantastic. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's an epic piece, that's for sure. That's for sure. And that's Book of Death, Fall of Harbinger, number one, released in 2015. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next reading.